What's up guys? Pedro Dordas Santiago back at you. It's about 10 o'clock. It's 10.09, St. Louis, Missouri. For those of you that are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're not making 30 to $35 an hour doing your gig work, I can help you out. Also, don't forget, bet on you, set goals one day at a time. So real quick, I'm gonna do a couple shout outs. I got some new people commenting, asking me some certain questions and things like that. So let's send some shout out love. Uh, Zach Attack, uh, Door Hub Hustler, Hannibal the Freelancer, he's got a channel, check him out. Kathy, Christy in Ohio. Yeah, China King is a very popular name for Chinese restaurants. Uh, Comp Entertainment, he asked me about doing a day in the life. I don't know that many people are interested in me yet. Uh, my life used to be pretty rather, uh, I would say why, like a lot of things happening. Right now I'm in a place in my life where it's pretty normal and kind of, I wouldn't say boring, but exciting for doing this kind of stuff and betting on me. But like, yeah, if I had a camera following me around years ago, it'd be some interesting content. I'll say that. Uh, Albert Rain, uh, Kathy, James, Greg, uh, oh man, Ride Along 980, and then JC. And my boy Casey, he always seems to comment and he's always looking out. Appreciate it, Casey. Big fan, man. Uh, appreciate the love and support. So 12 days ago, I wanted to get to 100 subscribers and I did. So was, this coming Sunday would be two weeks. I hit 100 that Saturday night. Thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to get to 200 subscribers by uh, this coming Sunday. So in order to do that, I need 39 more. Help, help a guy out. Hit subscribe, comment, hit a thumbs up, thumbs down, hit the bell notifications, all that stuff. So real quick today, I'm gonna be talking about uh, a few things I wish I knew before I started gig work. So I did Uber, uh, I did it re he heavy before the pandemic, like right before I started, like a couple months before. I picked up people since, but not a lot, but I hit it hard for like three months. I was Ubering, I would work my, my career job I had at the time and then at nighttime I dash I would uber for three four five hours till two three in the morning sometimes crazy stories wish I had a camera in my car if I had a dash cam to show you guys some of the things I've been through and seen and people I've interacted with I got some good stories maybe another time another day I can share those stories it would be better just to see it live like I've experienced some crazy stuff picking people up um, so I'm gonna talk about Uber and DoorDash things that if you're new, um, it might help you. These are things I wish I would have known going into it because I made a lot of mistakes and not knowing this and what orders to take and what neighbors to be in, what people not to take, how the app works, how to communicate with people, uh, things like that, right? How to protect yourself when you're doing gig work. So I'm going to share some of those, some of my thoughts on that today. And then I'm also going to throw in, I had a uh, commenter or subscriber ask me to do a sports analogy. I do some from time to time relating uh dashing and things to sports uh for you sports fans out there i'm a big big sports fan basketball is my number one baseball season started yesterday big baseball fan of football those are the three i really follow know a decent amount about played basketball often still kind of play it to this day the pandemic slowed that down but um should be getting back into that gonna be playing some baseball here soon uh that'll be really fun looking forward to that so the analogy I'm gonna throw out there today, it'll be somewhere probably in the middle of this video, is uh, taking what the defense gives you. So that's really true, especially in football. So you have certain zones and coverages, and you know, football can be very complicated from a defensive off offensive standpoint. So I'm gonna talk about taking what the defense gives you, and in this case, the defense will be DoorDash and or maybe the customer and the time of the day. Those things are the defense, and I will be playing the offense in the scenario taking what they give me okay so i'll explain that as, as i hit a scenario later we'll kind of talk about that a little bit so don't forget hit that subscribe button let's have a great day today don't forget bet on you every single day all right guys i want to show you something real quick before you open the dash app so last night i couldn't go to sleep i'm in bed see that top message mcdonald's 2 20 in the morning i turn the app on i do this sometimes because i'm i'm kind of a psychopath and it's kind of addicting. So I like to see like, hey, is it busy? Is it not busy? Is there a peak pay? Even though I'm just sitting at the crib, if I can't sleep. So they had a no peak pay, but it said it was very busy. It was two o'clock in the morning or two sixteen. I got one, two, three, four, five, six orders that came in. Obviously I didn't get up and take them. It would have had to, to get me out of bed at that time, it would have had to been like 30 bucks, something stupid. Um, and I might've done it because I'm a little crazy, but super busy in my market at two in the morning. Um, 
all these orders were trash too. They were all for like $5 at two in the morning. So if you're ordering food at two in the morning, you got you should, you should be tipping more than two dollars. Just that's just my opinion. And also, shout out to the dashers that are out there picking up these orders at these long lines of McDonald's. There was a Walgreens in there. If you're out dashing at two in the morning, you you got hustler spirit, mad respect, and props to you. Never dash that late. I've dashed as late as like one o'clock sometimes, but never that late. So just want to share that with you guys. So let's see what we got today in the dash. I don't think there's a peak. I think there might be a dollar peak uh, where I'm going to be. So let's open this bad boy up together. It's 1025. I just stopped at the mail. Oh, so there's a dollar. Uh, and then there's also going to be, I believe, so lunchtime starts at 11. So Webster Groves has a dollar from 11 to 2. And I'm going to check downtown because that's a zone really close to me. A dollar... Okay, not a lot going on. So actually, I like that. I don't like to see all the crazy peaks because that brings out all the drivers and then actually I make less money typically. Typically. I like when the peak just kind of hits um, all of a sudden. That's that's what I like. So, all right, let's turn this bad boy on. I am right in the zone of the Walmart time. The Walmart orders hit in my market at like, I'm going to go to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do lunch till three o'clock. So I'm gonna go until three. You gotta hit your boxes here. Oh, forgot one. Let's just see. I'm gonna keep this live. I'm, it, it's it's fine. I want to see. I'm gonna say there's gonna be an order that's gonna come in in the next 15 seconds. Let's see if I'm right here. But today, my my goal. Um, I'm gonna make. Two, if I can make 235 for today, that'll put me right at a good even number for the week of where I want to be. Tomorrow, I'm not going to dash a lot. Make 100 bucks tomorrow, and then probably 200 on Sunday. And that's going to put me right at my, uh, put me a little over my goal for the week. So uh, today will be, I'll probably dash maybe eight hours. That's my goal. Eight hours to make that money. We'll see. Uh, hmm. I don't usually start here. I will say that. I'm on a street. I'm in my zone, but I don't start. I live like right where my thumb is right there. I live on Cherokee Street, and I'm just a little bit down the street. I'm the blue icon, so we'll see. I won't keep you guys. I thought maybe I'd get one in the first 15, but catch you on the flip side. All right, as soon as I turn it off, I got an order. Two orders, eight miles, 1725, 13 items. Both of them are Papa John's. This is downtown area. The drop-offs are super close, right? I got 65 seconds here. I'm going to show you guys this. So let me zoom in here. So I am... Doo -doo -doo. So most of the miles are actually... It's probably like six miles to get to the Papa John's there. I know exactly where it's at. Picked up from there before. And then the drop-offs are really close. Puts me in a good area for lunch. So I'm going to take these orders. I'm going to accept both of these. Let's see what they are individually because you can see what they are individually as after you accept it. Okay, so it was 1725. Turn right onto Nebraska Avenue. Let's exit that. So 875. So that means the other order is going to be about the same. 8 and 8, 16s. Yeah, so each order is about the same. I'm on a dollar peak. One of them had a lot of items or I said 13 items together. Uh, this particular merchant doesn't show me that. But let's see if we can see a subtotal. If I hit delivery, it'll give me a subtotal sometimes. 107.55. Guys, this is going to be a hidden tip. That is awesome. That's probably eight or nine pizzas. I don't know. That, this is a good way. And and they're, I'm dropping it off to Coldy's Coffee. That is I'm dropping it off to people that are tipped employees. That's the key here. I know that this order is going to be, it could be 20 bucks, 23 total. This is a great way to start my day. Super excited about seeing the hidden tip on this one. So I'm going to get going on this order right here. Great way to start. All right, guys. So that other order is only one item for 14 bucks. But listen, dashers, okay? We talk about looking at the order. We talk about 
the proximity of the miles. It was a good payout for the miles. My drop-off, it's a one pickup spot, one restaurant. Drop-offs are close. I know the area. Good scenario. That 7.9 miles, I don't love 7.5. You know, I don't love the distance, but I don't hate it for the payout. But what enticed me the most about that was Papa John's. And it was 13 items. So it's, you know, with Papa John's, they do the sauces. They actually count those as items. But when you see pizza and you see a lot of items in a place like that, where the pizzas are kind of expensive, they're not cheap like Little Caesars or Domino's, I expected one of those orders to be big. Or both of them to be like, you know, six items, seven items, you know, 50, 60 bucks a pop. Probably a hidden tip on both. I, I imagine, I've, I'm 99% sure I'm gonna get a hidden tip on that $100 order. Great way to start. Look at your items, okay? Look at your items. Because even if that was like 10 miles, I might have probably still taken it just because of the amount of items. This total payout was, I think, for 17 and some change. I'm guessing it's gonna go, I think it could be a total of close to $30 combined, which would be a great way to start the day. This is gonna take me probably, as long as the pizzas are ready, maybe 30 minutes. So 30 minutes making 30 bucks is great. Even if it's only on the low end, if it's $17, not the end of the world, there's no hidden tip, it's still a good payout. But check those items, accept those offers. If they meet your criteria, even if the miles is a little bit more, if the item counts high, um, take that gamble, take that risk, you're probably gonna get a hidden tip. All right guys, so while I'm going to pick up these pizzas, hey, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, I, I like getting good orders. It's only 10.33. Um, when you start your day off like this, I'm gonna be able to, I should be able to complete these. It's gonna be 11, so I really haven't even hit the lunch peak and I could have already made 30 bucks. Really great, really, really great way to start your day. Feet, turn um, left onto the I-55 North ramp. Let me turn this down. So I'm gonna talk about that uh, sports analogy, taking what the defense gives you real quick. Let's talk about that and how I relate it to some of my dashing and gig, gig econ working. Um, so for me, turn right? Turn left onto the I-55 North ramp. I gotta turn this off. I know where I'm going. All right, so for me, I have a formula and I stick to it 90, 99% of the time I'm gonna stick to that because it works for me. Um, but sometimes when you, you know, when you step up to the line of scrimmage, your football, your quarterback, you know, your offensive coordinator, your offensive player, and you're looking at what the defense is giving you, right? And, you know, you're down a whole bunch of points in the game, let's say, and they're giving you everything in the under routes. Like they're, they're saying, you know what, here's 10 yards. We just, you, you can't score a touchdown. We don't want you to score a touchdown, but you know, we're gonna give you all these little 10 yards, 15 yards, chunk plays at a time. You see it a lot at the end of football games. A defense is playing really, really well all game. And then they just kind of back off because you know, you know what, the game's over, we won. We're gonna let you get these junk yards at the end of the game. So, as, a, as an offense, sometimes you're like, you know what, I'm just going to take what the defense is giving me and I'm not going to try to do a Hail Mary because they've got, you know, two safeties and i got all the defensive backs at the line of scrimmage, but I, I need to get some yards. I need to do something to maybe get a flea flicker, get some kind of play, get maybe I could field goal, maybe I can do something, right? So the way I uh, analyze that for, for dashing is I, I relate it to like stacked orders. So if you get one order to begin with, right? Let's say it's eight dollars going 3.5 miles. Uh, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna take that. Okay, it's, uh, it's Papa John's. We'll use Papa John's as a scenario. So you take that order, and then on the way, you get another Papa John's. So the order started off initially as just being an individual, and it became a stack. And it says six dollars for three miles. So you're at you know two dollars per mile ratio or whatever. And maybe that's the order you wouldn't take by itself because it's only six bucks and you know you don't love that six dollar by itself. Maybe your limit's eight bucks or ten dollar orders. But you're taking what the defense gives you if you take that order because it's the same merchant. So really, you're only having to do one extra step to make six bucks. And maybe there's even a hidden tip on that, right? So for me, sometimes I'll take those. I won't take usually an order that's six bucks going a few miles by itself during peak times, but if they add it on to me, if they add it on as a stacked, I'll probably take it. If it's a place I know I'm not gonna wait, that defense is giving me six yards, a free six yards, right? I see my play in front of me. If I, if I hit this slant route, 
I know there's nobody in front of him for six yards. It's a minimum six yards I'm going to get just by doing this play. It's a safe play, right? I'm going to take that order for that six bucks because then I just, you know, I thought I was only going to make eight. Now I'm making 14. Now I'm making 14 bucks for just one more stop, a few miles, right? So for me, sometimes taking what the defense gives you is okay. You have to be able to adapt your game plan accordingly. Um, I don't do that all the time, but sometimes I do it. All right, guys. Check out the pink polo. I'm trying to dress up today a little bit. All right, so my first thing I wish I knew as a gig econ worker, whether it's Uber or DoorDash. This one's a little more specific to DoorDash, but it could be very addicting. Uh, for somebody like at least with my personality traits as well, like it can be very addicting. You get it and you're like, you just, you, you know, with Uber, like when I was picking up people, I'd be like, oh, I'm just waiting to hear that bell. You know, like I want to get, uh, I want to see how many miles could it be. Then I'm calculating how much is that? You know, I, you know, I, I, I would even see the location I'm picking them up at. I'm thinking, oh, now I got to figure out, okay, are they going to be drunk? Okay. Probably picking up somebody past 11 o'clock at night from a bar, they're drunk in my experience so how am i gonna you know that's that could be interesting good conversation most of the time that's a really good conversation right um but it becomes addicting with doordash you're just waiting for that order to come in and like the the the, the sudden rush that you can get sometimes can be overwhelming um it could be fun um for you new dashers i would caution you to know your limits know that when you want to turn it off turn it off because it can be very addicting you're getting money and you're making money and you want to you know hit your goal for the day or if there's some kind of challenge out there you know complete 10 deliveries for 15 bucks you like you're waiting you're you're anticipating that 15th delivery or whatever right so it could be addicting know that so as a new dash i wish i knew that going in i would have thought about doing it a little differently um, there are many times, even to this day, I say, oh, I'm going to be done. I did it yesterday. I'm going to be done after this order. And I leave the app on because I'm like, oh, I'm just one. Maybe I'm one order away from getting a really good one. And if I turn it off, I might miss that. Right. So it. I wish I would have known. I wouldn't have thought it would be as, as addicting as it can be and exciting for me. You know, it is. So for fellow dashers or Uber drivers or Grubhub, whatever platform you use, let me know. Does that resonate with you? Does that make sense? Um, for me, I, I was surprised that it would be like this. So that's the one. That's the first thing I wish I knew going into it, uh, because then maybe I would have done things a little bit differently to put myself in situations that were a little better and not scary with Uber. I've been in some scary situations, picking up people late, taking them to neighborhoods that are unfavorable. Um, Real quick, real quick story. I picked up three guys from a strip club months ago. They were hammered, cool guys, but the the place that they wanted me to take them to wasn't accurate. Then they stopped. They wanted me to take them, like you know, stop the app and do it again. The guy didn't have money, but the guys had all these poker chips. They had gone gambling the day before, and they were they, they gave me fifty bucks. Okay. And I, I took a risk. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, he gave me the 50. Then he gave me another 50 after I dropped them off. It wound up being like a $110 fare for probably about an hour's worth of time I spent on it. But, you know, like, I wish, knowing what I know now, I, I might not have done it because I was in a spot that wasn't great. These guys were a little shaky. But the money, I was like, I want that 100 bucks. I want that 50 bucks. So, I don't know. I just wish I would have known some things, you know, beforehand. I would have been able to make some better personal choices, putting myself in better safety positions. All the news going on right now with all these workers and stuff, like, there are some people wilding out out here and customers that are being rude and drivers being put in uncompromising situations. So I wish I would have known that going in. Luckily, nothing's happened to me, but I've been put in situations where one moment, one way or the other, something could have happened. So. Um, that's the first thing I wish I would have known going into it is that it could be very addicting and sometimes that addiction and that excitement can lead you down a place that's not safe. All right, guys, I'm pulling up to Papa John's. That was pretty quick. So second thing I wish I knew before doing this kind of work, have multiple bags, multiple bags, two, three bags, because you're going to get stacked orders, especially if you're new now, the way that the DoorDash is doing it and even Uber Eats are going to stack orders crazy all day. Have multiple bags. They help. Customers expect that. They like that. You're going to get better ratings. It's going to be more convenient for you, actually, as well. 
um, you know, your car, you want to keep your car clean. If you've got certain bags and there's grease and stuff and they're not in a bag and you're putting them on your seats or on your floor or whatever, you might get that grease or that food debris on your interior of your car. But if it's in a food safe bag, it's going to be hot, but it also protects your car. Have multiple bags. You can buy them in certain places. Some places give you bags. Uh, some of the pizza places. I got a really awesome DoorDash bag from Emos this week. Have multiple bags. Um, usually the platform is going to give you one for free. I recommend you having at least two or three. One order. Look at that. Hang on. The other order is one pizza in the bag and there's some sodas. But uh, so really cool. This uh, on the Cleed in uh, the Slew area, this Papa John's. The guy goes, oh, let me give you a really good big hot bag for pizza. And he didn't have his keys to the shed. I'm going to come back later. He said I can grab two bags. Won't cost me anything. Big pizza bag. So that's really cool. Um, so if you're a St. Louis driver, Papa John's on the Cleed, the manager in here, come down. He'll give you a bag. So I'm going to go take these off. I'll show you guys what, if there is a hidden tip on the big one, which I'm expecting there will be. So we'll see. All right, guys. So let's see. I just dropped it off. Like the local, call these as the local spots, like the headquarters here. Let's see if I'm right. So it was 8.50. nice so twelve dollar tip double the rate 16 bucks the other order i got is eight so it's going to wind up being 24.75 for this one trip awesome way to start all right guys dropped off that second one so i'm right at i'm just under 30 minutes actually so and that one wanted to be in a dollar more so i'm at 25 25 for like 28 minutes of work uh back to papa john's oh lord that see the miles on this one's too far so i can't take this one but um so real quick, another thing I wish I knew before I started this is don't get in arguments with customers uh, via text message or in your car if you're picking up an Uber rider. Like it's not your opinion on the world or the scenario or if they tipped or not tipped doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. They don't. They don't care to know it usually. Uh, you're better off just kind of playing it down the middle. Now, if somebody's being disrespectful to you, that doesn't mean you just like take it necessarily. But it's not worth giving them your energy and giving them disrespect back. Uh, you're only going to know this person for a very, very small amount of time, um, and you don't want to make that interaction a significant one either way, right? So that's something that it's hard, you know. I wish they had like a video I could see to watch that because sometimes like I would take things maybe personal or I would say you know oh they don't like me they're being mean or I, you know and that's not you shouldn't think like that you know um you got to have a short memory people don't you know you are a worker to them you're you're, you're you're providing a service you're you are a worker and some of them will even think like oh you, you know you're their servant or something like just take me here and drive me there where's my food like you got to let that stuff just roll. You got to brush it off your shoulder, as Jay-Z used to say. Don't take it personal. Uh, move, just move on to the next one. End that trip. Give them their food. Call it a day. Say thank you and move on. Uh, you're going to be more... It's going to suit you better in the long run. It's not worth getting frustrated over things you can't control. And there's going to be a lot of things you can't control doing this kind of work. A lot of stuff. Some things you can... But most of it you can't control yourself you can control what orders you take but you can't control what the customer says you can't control how slow the merchant is if somebody's rude if somebody gets in your car and they're drunk and you know they pass out i've had that you can't control that right so there's going to be some things you're going to have to deal with and know that going in i wish i knew that going in that you know i know generally people are crazy i worked in the restaurant industry for almost 20 years but doing this kind of work i didn't expect it to be as that crazy you know so I wish I knew that going in. So for you new gig kind of workers or dashers or Uber drivers or Grubhub or if you do Lyft and you happen to be seeing this, you know, don't take stuff personal. Um, it, this interaction and this trip is a very short, it's a grain of salt on a table that's got millions of salts in the grand scheme of your life and what's going on. So don't let it take your energy. Look at this one, $28, five orders, Walmart, 17 miles. 17 i mean if that i would do these five orders if it was 10 miles i'm taking it but the 17 is going to take too long i don't like walmart but just want to show you guys that all right so I, it's going to be busy today i mean this thing's going off like crazy 
But one thing I'll say, and some of you, I'm not a Walmart order fan. I, I've taken more than I like to admit, but I did that out of just not knowing any better. Um, and I took one last week because the platform changed. Customers can tip. Man, this is so bad. Ooh, it's busy. But I'll say this: you can see the tips now. You can see the tips if somebody tipped. That twenty-eight dollar order in the past would have been twenty bucks. They used to give you four dollars an order. So, but it was twenty-eight. There's no peak. I'm not on a peak right now, at least. So, um, if somebody tips, you can see it. So. I'm not against a Walmart 100% now, like maybe it's 90% of the time, I'm probably not gonna take it, but there's gonna be some out there that you could probably take, so. Uh, another quick tip, something I wish I would've known, for this is for you brand new dashers. Word travel, people know now, most of you should. Your your uh, acceptance rate doesn't matter. You can get it all the way down to zero, they're still gonna send you offers. Don't feel like you need to take an offer because you're obligated to, or because your acceptance rate's in the red and everything else is green and it says, for a better percentage, accept more deliveries. No. Know your market. Know what you're willing to take. Know your miles. What do you want to accept? You're an independent contractor. You don't have to take any orders. You get to pick what you want. Um, when I first did Uber uh, Eats, I didn't really know that. And then even with DoorDash, I would just I would take everything. To first, oh, okay, here's $3. Oh, great. And not knowing how the tips would work and things like that. And I probably took... 10 or 20 orders in the beginning that were just so bad that I would definitely not take now. But so just a, got to remember your acceptance rate doesn't matter. Um, they can't deactivate you for that. So know that going in, if you're a new driver and you're, if you happen to be seeing this for the first time and you're like, Oh, I didn't know that your acceptance rate does not matter. All right, guys, I just got an order. It's a Walgreens pickup, one item, two miles, eight bucks, real easy. But real quick, another thing I wish I would have known this to me is actually the bigger picture, like really, really important for taxes right um i didn't do this in the beginning i do it now you want to put a little money to the side somewhere okay F even if it's a few dollars even if it's five or ten dollars a day to cover your tax expenses and or car expenses okay depending on your life situation and what you got in the bank and things like that and your bills but planning ahead is crucial otherwise if i make 35 dollars an hour but i don't plan ahead I'm probably only making 15 in real money, in real cash. Cause you gotta pay taxes, you got gas, you got uh, routine maintenance, uh, little things that are gonna they add up and it eats away your $35 per hour. It doesn't eat away at mine because I've looked at what tax advantages I can take of. I'm thinking ahead. Um, I had to get some break work done yesterday. It was only 225 bucks, but I plan for that stuff so that if it happens, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't ruin my week, right? It doesn't ruin my week. And for some of you, that might not be the case, but a lot, a lot of you, if you plan ahead, so I wish I would have known a few months, I was a few months late on this, but if you plan ahead and, and, and look at your money differently and think about tax season before it comes, you're gonna save thousands of dollars, okay? Keep every receipt, okay? Keep every gas receipt, maintenance receipt. If you're out and you're eating, you know, if you grab lunch for yourself one day, keep that receipt. Put them in a little pouch, put them in your car, that's what I did. Now I have an app and I track it on an app and it tracks it for me and it'll correlate into my taxes for next year. Super easy. Um, the Get Upside app or any kind of app that gives you cash back on gas, get it. You're gonna use gas more than ever before. Get get some kind of app, install it, they're free. It's free money. My my calculations, this year I'm probably, I'll get $1,000 cash back in gas. Free money, it's a thousand bucks, okay? So I wish I would have known these things before. I would have been a little ahead of the game as far as money planning and strategizing and things like that. But if you're a new dasher, even if you're an old one and you don't think about doing these things, it's never too late to start. Get an app, put a little bit of money aside, think about your money in a smart way. That way when taxes come along or when something happens, a big maintenance or whatever, you're prepared for it and it doesn't cripple that week of earnings for you and, and causes you to get, become frustrated. Um, think about your money in a smart way and plan for things that are going to happen. All right, guys, picking up, I just picked up that Walgreens super easy. It was in there for like one minute, man. I like the Walgreens sometimes. I've been hit a couple times where it's been bad, but most of the time the payouts are good and the miles are low. All right, another a couple, two more things, really just one, I'm rolling into, it's two, but I'm gonna roll into one. Things I wish I would've known before dashing. This is for dashing. 
And well, no, it's for Uber too, because there's peaks and promos. There's same thing. They call them different things, but same thing. Don't follow or chase peak pay. Don't do it. Okay. Sometimes it's worked for me in the long run. I remember I'd go. I would. I remember one time I drove like 20 miles for a, a four dollar peak. I'm like, ooh, every order is going to be seven bucks. Phew, disaster. Wasted time. Wasted gas. Wasted money. Um, the reason there was a peak is people don't tip out there and or there's no other dashers or it's slow and like it was just I did I made like I didn't make anything. I started making real money when I stopped following the peaks and concerning myself with peaks and stuck to my plan. Because there's enough orders out there in my market and there's enough people that will tip accordingly and they live in a close proximity and I can make money without having to chase it. Okay? I, I want to stay in my area and you'll learn what that area is for you and everybody's got them and they could be for you. They could be good for you for different reasons and bad for a different dasher for other reasons or whatever. But don't chase peaks. If you happen to get a peak, great. If there's a peak in the zone right next to you and you're in that zone, turn your dash off, turn it on in that zone. You can keep that peak and go back to your dash. That's a huge tip that I think some people don't know. It helps me a lot. I make an extra 100 bucks a week probably minimum on doing that, okay? Also, don't sit in hot zones it's going to tell you with dasher with the dasher app the hot zone it tells you a restaurant that's not always accurate i'll be it'll be a sunday and we know chick-fil-a is closed on sundays and it tells me that there's a chick-fil-a on hampton it's a hot zone no it's not a hot zone because they're closed or it will tell me there's a hot zone for an area that i know is really bad it's slow or they're too busy and it's it's going to be a hassle i don't want to be in a hot zone you know so know your market, learn what areas and what merchants you want to deal with. Don't follow the peaks. Don't follow and chase the hot zones because they're not always accurate. All right, guys, just drop that off. Got a $9.25. I'm on a, actually a dollar peak just happened. So this is a Chick-fil-A. It's going a couple more miles. That's normal for me, but it's dropping me off in a spot I like to be. Once again, it's about where it's going to end your trip for me a lot of the times. But it's a $70 order, so it's going to be a hidden tip on here probably. That nine bucks probably gonna turn into 12 or 13. Um, so that, that's for the six miles, I'm gonna take it um, all day long. So gotta remember guys, don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone if there's a lot of items, big subtotal, it's gonna wind up working in your favor 99 times out of 100. As long as it puts you in a good spot to get a, another order right away, which this one does, take it. Uh, take it, take it, take it for sure. So we'll see uh, see how quick I can get this one done. Chick-fil-A is usually pretty fast. Uh, I've been dashing for just under an hour, and I'm at $35, $36? Oh. I'm at $34.75, so not bad. Man, it's beautiful outside today, St. Louis, Missouri. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, so another thing I wish I would have known real quick while I'm driving to get this order, um, and I didn't know this in the beginning, and you know, in the beginning I was driving around looking or driving and waiting for a uber ride ride to get pinged to me or i'm waiting for i'm driving around waiting for a doordash order and i'm driving and i'm driving and i'm driving and when i'm driving i'm wasting gas right sometimes i'm driving towards a location that's nice but i'm wasting gas so so if you have a mile to money ratio let's say yours is two dollars a mile and you're only accepting orders that give you that ratio. If you're driving around before or after these orders on empty miles, your miles to money ratio is goes out of the water because gas is gas, miles is miles, right? You want to be driving to an order, right? Or to the customer. That's it. Those are the miles you want to put in your car. Now, obviously, you're going to put miles in the beginning to get to your zone you want to be in and things like that. But ultimately, if you do it right, you want to be driving, picking up an order, taking it, and then finding a spot you could sit and chill to the next one. Or if, if you're good at it, most of the time you should be able to drop the order off and then, you know, you're driving down the road or something and you get another one, right? But don't just drive aimlessly wanting to go to a better zone or what you think is a better zone and driving around waiting for the thing to go off you're wasting gas you're wasting gas so you're basically taking money from that your next order or your last order and you're just throwing it on the street into the gas you're just throwing it 
You're just taking that 50 cents and you're just throwing it out the window if you're driving around. Keep it. Park the car in a good spot and be patient and wait. You're saving gas by doing that, okay? I wish I would have known that. I've wasted gallons and gallons upon gas trying to drive aimlessly, trying to what area is good and oh, I got to drive. No. You want to sit and park, especially when it's busy because you're going to get orders, okay? It's going to send, it's going to give you an order to the, the closest proximity, the best available driver. I don't think that's always accurate because I'll get orders. I'm nine miles away from the place. There's got to be a dasher that's closer, right? Um, but if you're driving around just to drive, it's it's you're killing your profitability okay so at the end of the week if you made a thousand dollars but you did you drove around more than you needed to that thousand's probably only 950 bucks so you cost yourself maybe 50 bucks so something to think about all right guys real quick i want to show you this bag i talked about it yesterday um somebody actually commented on it and they wanted to see it more this is the bag i use it's not the bag you get from doordash um i got lucky and got this bag but it's a pizza bag, super big. I can fit like six pizza boxes in there actually comfortably, okay? But what's better is I can still stand it up and fit bags of regular, you know, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, any kind of merchant, right? Um, it's wide still too, it's, it's fantastic. What I like most about it is you carry it like a pizza bag, you know, underneath if you need to, but because most of my orders are not pizza, but I use this bag anyway recently. It's got, you can hold it like this. I could do it like a backpack. I could literally put this thing on my back like a backpack. If I needed to go to a spot that was like, I don't know, I'm gonna walk a little bit, I could backpack it. I'm not giving you guys a good tutorial, but I should be standing up, but. It's, it's an awesome bag. I got it for free from Emos. If you're in the St. Louis market, if you happen to pick up from Emos, don't be afraid to ask them for a bag. Just ask them, hey, you got, a, you got any pizza bag? I can really use one. They're gonna give you one. Um, if they've got it, they're gonna give it to you. This is an awesome bag, I love it. I'm gonna get another one next time I'm at that Emos. I'm gonna ask them for another one to see if they've got one. Uh, even if I got if I gotta spend 10 or 15 bucks on this bag, I'll buy it. And they, you could probably get these in the stores or whatever, I don't know. I got it for free. I like that price, so it works for me. But that's the bag to get right there, guys. It's it's multifunctional, it's really good. It's not too big either. Some of the pizza bags are like super big and they're awkward to carry around. This is absolutely perfect for me, so. All right, guys, just dropped that off. That Chick-fil-A wound up being 16 bucks, so I'm at, I'm at 50 bucks in an hour and a half, not even an hour and a half. So really, really great start to the day. Um, let's see, Panera. I'm not loving this one 12 bucks for 10 miles it's two orders I'm not doing that so the last thing i can i'd like to share with you guys things i wish i knew before is this is more for just dashers or for uber as well but <clears throat> when you're going into a place going into a restaurant or a fast food place or whatever and you walk in you know I used to kind of assume, oh, they know, they know I'm with DoorDash. I didn't wear anything that said DoorDash or whatever. Even if I had the bag, I, you know, sometimes I didn't have the bag with me. Um, you got to announce yourself. You have to let them know what you're there for. Yeah, I'm Pedro. I'm, I'm here for a DoorDash order. And give them the name of the person. Don't don't assume they're bu these places are busy now. They they, they got people coming in and out. Um, you're a number to them, right? But you, you want to stand out in a, in a positive way. You want to let them know why you're there. Don't just walk in and stand there and assume that they are working on your order because you're the only one that matters at that time. That is not the case. You got to make sure you're communicating with these people, the workers, you, you treat them with respect, you're nice, you're courteous, uh, please and thank you. That stuff goes a long way. If you walk in there and assume, I don't want that order, and assume that they know why you're there. That's foolish. Okay, I've done it. You need to make sure you're communicating and, and you're, you know, asking questions. If it seems busy, ask them, how long do you think it might be? In a polite way, not a rude way. Oh, you know what? It might be five minutes. Great. You know what? We're actually behind. It might be 30 minutes. Then you can make a decision. But if you're just walking in these places willy-nilly and assuming that they know exactly who you are and what order you have and what number is it, you're wrong. You got to communicate with them, especially when it's busy. 
Okay, if you walk into a place and there's nobody there, this happens This happens to me a few times, then they're probably going to know, like, what order you're there for. But most of the time, if you're dashing, man, that is trash. If you're dashing, they got other people, they got other customers, they got other dashers, they got Postmates drivers, Grubhub, they got all these platforms. Walked into one place, they had four, like, uh, four iPads going. A Postmates, a Grubhub, an Uber Eats, a DoorDash. They had four all on at the bar. And the thing was just popping, going off crazy. Like, you are not the only GigCon person out there. There are other people doing it. Make sure you're, you you announce why you're there with professionalism and you're nice and you're not rude. And that's going to go a long way. Okay? So those are some of the things I wish I knew ahead of time. It would have saved me some stress. would have made me some more money. Um... You know, subscribe to this channel. I hope you guys make thirty to thirty-five dollars an hour, like we talk about. And cheers. Have a we great day. About taking, we talked about taking what the defense gives you a little earlier. I just accepted a nine dollar and fifty cent order for Chipotle, two miles. Just pulled up, and then they gave me this. Taking me, no, it's too many miles. I'm on a two dollar peak pay, so two. It's a couple dollar tip, I guess, or one dollar tip, and probably got denied a couple times. I don't know, but the mileage isn't great. So in this case, I'm not going to take what the defense gives me. It doesn't really make a lot of sense um, to do that. So just, just want to show you guys that. All right, guys. So those are kind of the things I wish I knew going in. Uh, if you're new to the dashing or Uber or whatever, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll help you make money. Also, guys, don't forget, bet on you, set goals, one step or one day at a time, okay? I'm going to stay out here and get some money. This thing is going off like crazy. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Cheers.